Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Matthew Rasmussen, and today I'm going to describe the most fascinating piece of psychological research that has possibly been put forth, and that is split brain surgery. Uh, patients who have a split brain, they're called split brain patients. And I'm going to describe what it is, I'm going to describe why an individual may have split brain, I'm going to describe the outcomes, uh, as well as a little demonstration on what an individual would go through who has split brain uh, and how they're investigated, and then I'll finally wrap that up via the uh, ramifications of split brain surgery. So what is it? Well, it's not like multiple personality disorder, formerly known as disassociative identity disorder. It's not like that, okay, where an individual has multiple personalities. This is specifically a problem with the brain. Okay, specifically in that the left hemisphere is no longer able to communicate with the right hemisphere. Now, for you and I, we have connective tissue that connects the left to the right. This is called the corpus callosum. Okay, the corpus callosum is the connective tissue that connects the left to the right side of the brain. And in a particular situation, the individual may have this corpus callosum severed. Okay. The corpus callosum is severed, thus disallowing the left to communicate with the right and not allowing the right to communicate with the left. Okay. Now, why would that individual want those axons that take information over here and then push it over here? Why would they want their corpus callosum severed? Well, the main reason that individuals receive this uh, split brain surgery is to isolate seizures. So an individual has uh, very, very bad epilepsy, and that epilepsy, let's pretend that uh, there's neural activation, overactivation that starts in somewhere on the right side of the, the brain, the right hemisphere. That information then can actually be transmitted through those axons in the corpus callosum through to the other side of the brain to the left side of the hemisphere, and thus increase the activity over there, and thus increasing the level of a seizure. So again, to sever the corpus callosum, that is going to isolate the seizures to only one side of the hemisphere, thus allowing the other side of the hemisphere to remain stable. Now, is this the only way that an individual can have a severed corpus callosum? Well, primarily. However, individuals have been born with a degraded corpus callosum. So their corpus callosum may be degraded from birth. They may have a smaller corpus callosum than you and I. They actually may be born without a corpus callosum. Kim Peek, if anyone has heard of Kim Peek, Kim Peek was the individual who Rain Man was based off of. That individual was born without a corpus callosum, thus allowing his left and his right hemisphere to act separately. But most individuals born with the corpus callosum, essentially a united left and a right hemisphere. Now, what would be some of the uh, outcomes that are put forth from having a left and a right side of the brain? Actually, when you talk to a person who has split brain surgery, it's really, really hard to detect any sort of difference from that individual. The only way to really detect a difference is through research. And how does that research go? Well, let me give you a demonstration right here. This demonstration, uh, what I want you to do is I want you to um, look at this screen and um, we'll walk through this and show you how an individual and what an individual is testing. Here's a demonstration of an experiment that an individual who has a split brain, this is what they might go through. So on the left side of the screen you see a red box. On the right side of the screen you see a blue box. Now the left box, the red box, that is going to be whatever is placed in there will be transmitted to the right side of the brain. Now whatever is in the blue box will be transmitted to the left side of the brain. And this does this naturally does it for individuals who have a split brain as well as individuals who do not have a split brain such as you and I. Now as long as the participant is staring at that fixation point which they're asked to do that fixation point is that black dot in the center then the red box will be transmitted to the right side of the brain and the blue box will be transmitted to the left side of the brain. So stare at the fixation point something is going to appear on the screen very very uh, briefly. The individual is then asked once it disappears to describe what they saw and that is how the experiment goes down. Let me give you an example. So on the screen you saw something very very momentarily. 
what was that object? Can anyone guess? Well, it was kind of probably gray, you can say. Um, maybe it looked metallic. Um, it was probably a spoon. Yeah, it doesn't really look like a spoon, and I'm sorry about that. But nonetheless, you get the point on what the object is. And there are going to be many objects shown both on the right side as well as the left side. In this case, it was on the right side, and it's only shown momentarily. Participant is asked, what did you see? An individual who has split brain they will be able to say what they saw. Cool, right? I mean, nothing interesting here. I mean, they can do what basically we can do. Um, why do they have this capability? Well, it's believed and strongly supported that language centers in the brain exist primarily on the left side of the brain, in the left hemisphere. Okay, most people, about 90% of the population, has language on the left side of the brain. So therefore, if they receive information on the left side of the brain, then they're going to be able to talk about it, they're going to be able to describe it. They may even have, this may even be consciousness that is coming about here on the left side of the brain. So, this is the finding. Not really news to anybody. It was, this would be what you would suspect. However, Let's see what happens when an individual receives information in that red side of the visual field. So again, the individuals are asked to do the same exact task, stare at the fixation point. However, this time, an object in this situation was the same exact object was cast upon the left side of space. Ask the individual what did they see in the right figure please direct your attention to the figure on the right, you can see that the uh, spoon was cast upon the left visual field, and that information is um, hitting the retinas, and that therefore is being transferred through to the right occipital lobe, and then the uh, right temporal lobe. And what's going to happen here though, is that the individual is not going to be able to say what they saw. They can't explain what they saw. They have no idea what they saw, if you ask them. They'll say, I saw nothing. But the craziest thing, the most eerie thing that occurs next, is if you ask that person to just blindly grab, with your left hand, the object in which you just saw, they can do it. <laughs> As demonstrated in that leftmost figure, the first figure, they can grab the object that they just saw but they wouldn't be able to tell you with words. They would be able to grab it though. So what is this saying about consciousness? What is this saying about language? Well, it's definitely saying that language is primarily on the left side of the brain. But the ramifications are huge in respect to consciousness as well as language. Okay, so I hope this little demonstration helps in understanding what an individual who has split brain, uh, what they would be subjected to in an experiment. So, a pretty cool demonstration, right? Uh, hopefully that was very, very helpful and assisting in respect to your knowledge on how an individual who has split brain, how they are tested. Uh, there's so many other ways that can be tested through their nose and what they, t what they smell uh, and, and other ways as well. Now, to wrap things up, uh, what would be the ramifications from this research that uh, individuals have found? Well, that's basically getting at where does consciousness lie? What is consciousness? Uh, many researchers believe that consciousness exists primarily on the left side of your brain. And why is it the left side of the brain? Well, maybe that's because of language, okay? Because when I have a split brain, which I don't, but if I did, anything that exists to the right of where I'm looking, I would be able to see and talk about. However, if where I'm looking and to the left of it, that's going to the right side of my brain. If language does not exist there, which most people it doesn't, it exists on the left side. If language doesn't exist on the right side, I won't be able to consciously talk about it. So really, am I aware of what's going on over there? Maybe, maybe not. More than likely, no. So consciousness, a lot of researchers believe, is dedicated to potentially the left side of the brain, as well as it has a huge sharing with language. But again, the most fascinating piece of this all is that when a person has split brain, that object is on the left side, it goes to the right side of their, their brain, they're able to still interact with that object. They're able to grab that object, pick that object out, 
even without consciousness. So it really brings forth, well, why do we need consciousness if we have this portion of our brain that can just act almost simply blindly? Um, so there's some huge ramifications. Philosophers have been interested in this debate. Obviously, psychologists have been very, very interested in this debate. Um, many researchers throughout the years, the first individuals, however, Roger Sperry was a uh, very, very prolific researcher, David Hubble and Torsten Weisel, three very, very prolific researchers in respect to a split brain. Um, so feel free to investigate this further. Um, I would love to talk about this at a greater depth, but for now this uh, essentially can wrap up what split brain is, and I really hope this helps. Uh, thanks, and have a great day.